Scott in Boulder, Colorado. Not my Scott McGowan, my son, who lives in Denver, but an, there's another Scott. Who, who knew? There are probably a few Scots in Boulder, Colorado. It's a big city. <laughs> anyway, Scott writes to me and he says, Hello, Paul. What are your thoughts on the future of wirelessly connecting components and loudspeakers? I like the idea of taking cables out of the signal path. Thank you, Scott. You know, we've talked about this before, and I, I love the idea. I, I mean, if, if I were to wave my magic wand, we wouldn't have all of these cables and, and plugs and all of that. It would just be speakers, maybe an iPhone or something, but so far that's not proven to be really practical when it comes to high-end audio and getting the kind of quality that we want. So consider that wireless connectivity, and there's a couple of problems, so we'll go over them real quick. First off, if you are an analog guy, if you're playing your turntable, you're, you're not going to do well with wireless because you'll have to take that analog signal and convert it through an A to D converter into digital audio, stream it wirelessly over to the speaker there, it gets converted back into analog, and it will never sound as good as a pure analog signal going through our equipment here, our analog stuff. So that, that's first number one. But let's say you're a total digital guy, right? You're, or gal, you're a digital person. And that's going to put you in better shape in order to do the connectivity wirelessly. But we still have a number of problems. And those can, over time, technically we know how to do it. But I think we should go through a couple of things. What, first off, what's our goal? Are we trying to make a high performance speaker like the FR30 to where this is creating one of the best sounds one of the best listening experiences in the world with all this equipment. And this is not for the faint of heart. I mean, this is, there's a lot of stuff here. Is that what we're trying to do? Because if it is, yes, we could do it. But boy, we're a long way away from that. Just imagine all of this somehow crammed into that. Power plants analog electronics, right? So here's typically what happens in a wireless speaker. We'll have what we call DSP, digital signal processing, and we have a digital signal coming in. It comes into a, a microprocessor, it's received, we put it through DSP, we make it into a separate crossover. Because we're in a box, even this big speaker, it doesn't have a lot of heat ventilation. So we use class D amplifiers for the tweeter, for the mid-range, for the woofers, and it's all very compact, all very efficient, and it will never sound as good as that. Never. But, and this has been a long-held dream of mine, because look, I would like nothing better than to have something like the FR30 or the next step down, which is the FR20 eventually coming, to be wireless. Wouldn't that be a hoot? And not give up any sound quality. H how would we do that? Well, you'd have to take this stuff and put it in here. Now, even though that looks wild, there are some compromises we could make without compromising sound quality. For example, our ears are most sensitive as the frequency goes up. So tweeter, mid-range, those are areas where transparency, quickness of the driver, crossover points, phase, disper all that is really, really critical because our ears hear it instantly. And so this is where you're going to have to have a, a decent amplifier. You're not going to be able to just put any old class D amplifier onto here. But that's okay because the tweeter doesn't really take that much power, nor does the mid-range. So theoretically, we could design a fairly efficient Class AB or uh, uh, Darren Myers is working on actually a pretty cool circuit that may even outperform some of our, our classic uh, vacuum tube stuff, but we'll, we'll, we'll see about that. That could actually fit into here, and because it's relatively low power, we could get away with that. Now, we still have the problem of having to put a state-of-the-art D to A converter 
in there, maybe staying away from the DSP, I don't know, or perfecting the DSP to the point where it's perfect to our hearing. But those are all challenges that we can overcome. And I think we could make those work with a lot of research and a lot of time. Now the bottom end, not so important. It's important, the bottom end, but not for the, the electronics. There, a really well done Class D amplifier, oh, that could be just perfect, because that's a perfect place for a Class D amplifier. I don't know that you could do as well with an AB amplifier. That's a perfect place for it. Put the AB, the high, high performance up here, and I think you might be able to get away without losing any performance. But no one, to my knowledge, has actually done that yet. Not to where I would be happy with it. So, so far, that's the best we got. And until we can get around to beating that, which we will someday, that's in, in a very big nutshell <laughs> how I feel about wireless audio. <laughs> okay? All right. Well, thanks, and I appreciate the question. Um, well, Talk to you later. All right.